Hello everyone, welcome back to another Boris Live episode. Today's video is just going to be me talking about my Geo Mech 12 because I watched back over the video that I recorded um, of my 1997 Geo Mech 12 Auto Sedan video and there's a bunch of stuff I missed and I kind of want to talk more about it in this video. If you don't like any of this, please go to my next video. But you want to sit here and find out what's all wrong with my cow? <laughs> Let's find out. So, this is... Um, to begin, begin with, I have a whole thing rolled up here of everything I need to talk about. If not, I'm going to forget some stuff going over it. So, first of all, I, this is what I've uh done so far i've done the head gasket i've done the sound system in the vehicle i put a new battery in it and that's basically it uh, besides that the car keeps going if you want to add in all the honey freeze and stuff like that i bought six um i think it's garlands yes <laughs> i bought six garlands of honey freeze <laughs> Um, yeah, so here's everything that I've actually bought for the car. So I bought, so the head gasket, which was insanely easy to do on these because it's right there. You just pop the head up, put the new head gasket in. Now, I didn't take my time doing it, and I watched a couple of videos about it about how to do it and the videos I watched the guy just lifted up the uh, kept the intake all connected lifted up the head pulled the old one, old one out and put the new head gasket in set it back down so I did exactly what he did in that video which so I probably stood enough I sort of looked over make sure the head wasn't roped make sure the block didn't have any cracks in it make sure it wasn't roped stuff like that I just wanted to get it done and over with which I certainly have done because it screwed everything up. Oh, well, that, oh, the engine's just toast and I need something else. So, what it needs that I know of, here one sec, my computer turned off. Okay, so what it no needs that I know of is engine work, of course. It, this is what I want to do. I want to go and to a drunk yard and just buy a new engine. It's not new, but find one that has okay compression, stuff like that. Buy it, bring it home, throw it in my car. That's what I wanna do. But it could be a bunch of little things like me messing up the head gasket job and screwing that up and that's why it doesn't want. That may be the whole problem here. I just haven't looked more into it because we have a foot and a half of snow outside right now and I don't have a workshop to work on it and it, <laughs> and it won't fit in the shed so <laughs> can't work on it in the shed. So here's what I want to do with it. I want to put tinted windows on it, fix the headliner because saw in my previous video the headliner was coming down. Well, it's gone. It's a little bit here and there. So I got to put a new headliner in it and I'll make a whole video of how to do that, stuff like that. Uh, new found seats and... Um, some trim trim pieces on the interior like the radio bezel if you didn't notice from my last video that bezel was broke I really wish I said this in the video uh, the part one to this uh, so the way that radio bezel I want the radio and um, 12 volt outlet how that broke so it was actually in the car when I first got the car and I was plugging in a Bluetooth transmitter like we were talking about in that video. And the 12 volt outlet was really loose. So I put some electrical tape around the connector of the Bluetooth transmitter. And when I was pushing it in, I pushed too hard or whatnot. And that plastic was so brittle, it just exploded instantly. And it blew up 
old one radio. So I gotta get a new one of those to not be how to find some cup holders on a dome light. Okay, because mine doesn't have cup holders. The dome light's there. It just looks like a pile of crap. It's all cracked and falling apart. And I get it. Geo Metros, they were cheap. They were dope cheap vehicles. Is this zoomed in? No. They were dope cheap vehicles from the factory. That was the concept. Uh, cheap as hell and good on guys. So, something else I didn't talk about in that video is mine's actually a gas gas loaf. So, <laughs> um, typically on a drill mechtor you'll be ranging, let me just fart some numbers because I don't know them off the top of my head, but should range around 40 to 50 miles per gallon total guess right there but that's so why I'm pretty so here actually one sec let me actually pop that up and find out okay I'm back so um says a lot of stuff but combined average my uncle Darlin is 40.52 okay so pretty good 40 miles a gallon mine gets 20 <laughs> so what I think is actually happening is because my engine's so long compressing because all the compressions going into my radiator system and I'll talk about that here in a second <coughs> so long compressing that it needs more fuel to keep the engine alive so instead of dumping in this much fuel, it's dumping in double that. So that's why it's a gas hog. I mean, 20 miles a gallon, that's still pretty good compared to some of the other things I used to drive, like my Jeep Trail Key. That thing would get 15 on a good day. So it's better than that, but yeah. So, so here's everything I bought to begin with, with when I got the car. Uh, so I bought a new head gasket, I got an oil pan gasket because I was doing stuff with the, I was gonna do stuff with the main seal, front, sorry, the front main seal is bad so it leaks oil, but it's such a tiny amount, I don't want to replace that gasket, I have the gasket, it's out in the shed right now, it's it, pretty easy job on this, I just have to pop the main pulley off, pop that seal off, put the new one in, and that's it. So it's a pretty easy job, I just haven't done it yet, and if I'm already replacing the engine, why not use that main seal and just replace it on the new engine? Same with the oil pan gasket, stuff like that. Hello, it's me from editing. Anyway, so something I completely forgot to mention in this video was that uh, so when Jade had it, or Fox Loan, or Simmer Warrior Automotive, whatever you want to call him, um, he bought some new parts. He bought a new distributor, he bought a new basically the entire nissing system on that car has been replaced. And something else I didn't mention is that I bought um, a new timing belt. I completely forgot to mention that. The car has all new spark plugs, wires, coil, distributor, all of that. And it's all been replaced. The water pump's been replaced. I actually replaced that because that might have had something to do with the building pressure. But no, that's exhaust fumes. But yeah, I just forgot to mention that I thought I needed to, so. Now, why did I get an oil pan gasket? Because I was working on, I was gonna replace the main seal, and when you're in there, it's just easier. Well, why not just fold the oil pan gasket in it? Um, so the head could be warped or cracked in the black could be warped or cracked. I just talked about that, so I was like, my little list isn't lining up quite wide and I'm kind of losing stuff to talk about. But, uh, so let's talk about the main problem that my car is giving me that makes it really difficult to drive. So, 
my car holds one gallon of antifreeze, okay? That's how much it takes for the entire system. And, um, when you start it up and start wanting it, it use it pushes about half a gallon from the radiator, from the engine, all of that, into the overfill, okay? It just pushes it all out into the overfill, or half a gallon of it. So I only have half a gallon of antifreeze in my system. Now something else is my car doesn't have a thermostat in it. Why doesn't it have a thermostat in it, you may ask. Well, kind of a long story. So when I got the car, um, from Fox Loan or Pissimaroy Automotive, whatever you want to call him. Um, so I bought the car from him. He replaced the radiator in it, stuff like that. And he has a whole video about that. Go check that out. But, um, so when I got it, I kind of already knew it needed a head gasket. But the problem it was giving us with all this press or coming up, if you had the radiator cap off when you started it, it would shoot antifreeze five feet, six feet in the air, and go past the hood up into the air with antifreeze, cover everything with antifreeze. It was a nightmare. So I kind of settled that down by throwing a bunch of case seal into it, some head gasket sealer that you just dump into your radiator. I dumped one container into it and it helped it for a minute, but that was it. But okay, so the reason it doesn't have a thermostat is because so the problem it was giving us we thought oh it could just be the thermostat put in backwards a bad thermostat building press with the uh, water pump stuff like that and oh and also the heater didn't work at the time so we pulled the thermostat out and we found out it was put in backwards so we flipped it put it back in set it all up same problem blow the antifreeze everywhere nightmare so i decided hey just take that out just take the thermostat out and see what happens just diagnosing testing stuff out we took it out or i took the thermostat out started it up still building press so not as much though and my heat started working so i had heat in the carbon my heat all started working and so what everyone's told me so far is the problem with the heater probably was the engine was suffering all this exhaust at the thermostat and because it was hot enough it didn't open to let it go through the system so it would backfill into the uh, heater coat it would back all the exhaust and stuff would back through into the heater coat so I wouldn't get heat. It was a little bit of heat. It was better than having the setting set to cold. So, oh, another thing is that uh, AC works in it, but I'll talk about that later. So, I've decided just to want it without a thermostat, and that's how I've been wanting it since I got it where it's stored for the world. And it's done fine. And there was one day that I was like, hey, I'm gonna go out and test a bunch of stuff, seeing if I can figure out another possible problem with it. So I went, I went out, put the thermostat in it, started it up, and it was just causing major problems, building up a bunch of pressure. And after the thermostat finally opened, it would just drink and drink and drink antifreeze and it was smoking it smoked out our entire driveway uh, from the steam coming out the exhaust pipe it was it was terrible so that's why i kind of have a thermostat in my car so yeah so that's kind of just an overview you on everything that's wrong with my car and what needs done and all of that hopefully you guys enjoyed this i know it was just me sitting in front of camera this whole time and talking but i kind of felt like it needed my last video needed a little bit more sorry my dogs in my room and she wants out so gotta go deal with that i'll talk to you guys later goodbye